Uh, okay. The thing is, that's not obviously mate, because he always has a hidden square, and then also there's this piece that's guarding it, so I would need to kick this piece, ideally, but I also need to find multiple other openings. Uh, let's see. Tactics. Think, mouth. Think. Use your big brain. It's very large. Something like this, he can take, but that doesn't really give me anything, because actually I could take back, but then takes, takes, so I'm not going to really gain anything overall. I'm just trading down, but then I'm getting a nice little bishop for my knight, which isn't honestly that bad. There must be something better. Haru's trusting me to find this. So I can look for something like this. This does nothing really. I can look for this. I can also just look to push the pawn to potentially kick. But then if I push my pawn all the way there, I'm going to completely block out my diagonal. I can look for something like... Hmm, I see. Hmm. I could... Boom, boom. Now it's too slow. It doesn't really get anything. If I go here, that just takes. But then he loses the defender, and I go here. But then he could just go here. But then I have mate! Ah, I see! Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, you found it. That is it. Okay, so... So Moist Critical for sure is going to play pawn to e4. I, I looked at his games. I'm 100% sure of this. Um, okay. So, so... You looked at some of Gavin before video, so obviously you're gonna go C6. Um, now this is where it kind of branches. I, I don't have a great idea of what he's gonna play, but based on the games that I've seen, he's probably gonna try to uh, develop his pieces as fast as possible, is my guess. Um, mm -hmm. So he'll probably go Knight to C3 on move two, is my guess. Knight C3 or Knight of three. So, so I think that's where we should start. And then if you wanna go beyond that, we can, but it's, it's, it's a good starting point. So Knight C3. Um, you play d5. You can make moves as well. And now probably, okay. if I had to guess, most likely he's going to move the knight out. So yeah. let's say white moves the knight out. Have you seen this variation or not? Uh, maybe, honestly. I, I, I don't like... I, don't, I can't see a board, honestly, and just like know whether or not I'd see it, but I okay. could like play off of it, I guess. So, okay. So what I'm going to recommend that you play is that you capture this pawn. Mm -hmm. White captures the pawn. And you play knight to f6 here. Okay. So it looks a little bit weird because you're gonna you're you're gonna end up basically stacking these pawns in a way. Yeah. So so white's gonna take the knight. Right. And so now most likely I, I'm expecting um, this move to be played here. Bishop c4 or d4. The order is kind of interchangeable. It doesn't matter that much. Mm -hmm. um, so now you're going to develop the bishop to this square. Very important, by the way. You always want the bishop on the square aiming towards this white pawn down here. Okay. Is so that, now, you mean in general, or is it just for like this type of opening and setup? Um, I think specifically in the in the Karo Khans, you, you try to get the bishop to this square almost regardless of, of okay. what white does, rather than say like moving it one square forward. Mm hmm Okay. So now white will castle. You'll castle your king. And now most of the time white will play pawn to d4. And the way that you want to develop here, this is a little bit unorthodox, but I feel like something a little bit more off the beaten path makes sense, is you move your knight here. Probably white's going to play, I'm guessing, let's just, let's just look on plans instead of specific moves. Let's say white plays pawn c3. Okay. So now your knight blocks the bishop from developing, right? Yes. So the way that you actually play this position is now your knight doesn't have any really good squares to go to since you have this pawn here on f6. Why is uh, b6 not good to attack the bishop? Well, because basically the bishop's off, or not bishop, sorry, the knight's kind of off to the side. And what you really want to do in this opening is you want to be very aggressive and attack. Okay. So there's actually a very kind of, it's, it's an unusual maneuver here. It's not, um, it's, it's not common, which is why I'm just going to show you because you probably would not figure it out, is to bring the rook here. Okay. Now let's say white brings the bishop here. And now you're going to go knight to f8. Okay. So the point behind bringing the knight here is that obviously you can bring the bishop out. But you also want to bring the knight here to where it can start attacking towards white's position. Whereas if you, if you look at this position with the knight here, it's kind of off to the side. Like you can maybe bring the knight back to the center, but then white can always remove your knight. Okay, I see. And then my knight would probably... Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So you'd have to retreat your knight. So, so the whole point is basically you're trying to bring the knight here to uh, to attack towards the white king. So let's say white plays rook here. Um, you yep. put your queen here to create more pressure on this diagonal. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, let's say white plays queen d2. 
So what's your next move? And this just like think think for a second. It's not like a right. You can do this, but is there a better move? A better move. Hmm. Um, let me think. No, a better move. I feel like I can find a better move. I feel like I'm not that stupid. Um, you're, you're very good at one specific thing. Or, I mean, you're, you're good at chess, but there's one thing that I think you're better at than most of the other competitors, which is tactile solutions. Yeah. Uh, I don't see nothing. I don't know. Okay, so you, you, I'm sure you remember this, but remove the defender. Do you remember what that means? Oh, yeah, so, yes. Wait, what am I trying to remove the defender of? What piece, though? Like, what am I attacking here? So, okay, think about your pieces here. Okay. There's only really one thing you're attacking, right? I mean, you're, you're not attacking the bishop because the pawn. I yeah, mean, obviously uh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah, so you want me to remove this. Yeah, and this is actually very close to winning already for black. Mm -hmm. Because if I move the bishop back, you just take and you win the pawn because the queen and the bishop are protected. Yeah. Okay. Makes and sense. so let's say white Wait, so pushes the pawn. White pushes the pawn. What I take and then mm -hmm. double up the pawns and then it's the king side just free. Yes. So again, next move. My next move, I can look for a check maybe. Right, but you don't really need to do that. You want to attack. So now this is kind of okay. why I'm, I think this makes sense for you to play is because it's very conceptual, but you get these attacking possibilities. So okay. re remember how this knight is here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let me just make a, a normal move like this. So how do you... Yes, yeah, so you can do this, but you actually want to attack in a different kind of way here. So you want to go here to attack the pawn. Yeah. And let's say I move the bishop back to support it. Uh, what can I do here? Try to attack. This actually is almost a puzzle here. Yeah, okay. I can attack that. Is that, uh, but that's just me returning my move actually. Right, so, so, so actually effective. the correct move here is to move the queen over. Oh, to attack the other pawn, I see. Right, and actually now I can't protect the pawn because if I go bishop back, what's your next move? And I take. Right, and you just win the queen. queen. It's just, yeah, yeah that's just GG. game over. Okay. <laughs> So let's let's go back here. Let's let's say I play this, and I'm a little bit smarter. I push the pawn here. You're still gonna put the queen on the square. And now, what's your next move? Because now you queen. can't go here anymore. So again, since it's very much about ideas. Uh, I could get just get my knight out. I guess that's one possibility. Another possibility is that I go here to trade down, mm -hmm. since there's no other defender to that. So maybe that, and then he takes, and my queen is just in the middle of the board. Yeah, so really you, what, what you don't want to do when you play... So you've made a slight concession here, because you have these two pawns on top of each other. Yeah. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to get rid of this bishop. This bishop is okay. basically the whole point behind your setup. So... Um, yeah, that, that, that makes sense. Because his bishop isn't as active. It's just they're trying to defend. Mine's actually actively attacking king side, so I can't give up the piece. Right, so the, the way that you would play this is you, you, you bring the knight out. Mm -hmm. Let's say I move the rook. And now you want to you, you want to finish your development because your bishop and your rook aren't in the game here. So you can't really bring it here or here. So what's the next square that you would go to? Could bring it there mm -hmm. to attack. So now I'll trade. Right, and this is important. Remember that in this position, you don't want to take with the pawn. You want to take with the rook and you want to you double these rooks up. So okay. let's say I play like a move like rookie two. What's your next move? Right. And now let's say I move the rook here. The way that you would continue to try and attack since white's very solid is you bring this queen out to attack this pawn in a two. Mm. So a lot of the time I'm creating advantages through by taking his pawns that are just weakened. Is that right, like you're, you're trying to put pressure, pressure, but you're also trying to argue that this bishop is much better than his bishop and he's gonna have to waste time to uh to to sort of consolidate his position because it's very it's very very um loose white does not have have great peace placement here like the knight is not good your knight is better than white's knight because it can it can go like here this knight can't go to any of these central squares because your pawn dominates it mm. and then you also just want to bring the queen to the center of the board so white has to waste a bunch of time defending and once you get the queen to the center at some point you can also start looking to push this pawn forward and removing this bishop 
I see. So, what's the point of the Karokan? Is it you said it's an attacking, uh, like a like opening? It's an attacking opening, but am I just looking to attack the king side? Like, is that like my primary focus? Or? Well, it depends on the setup they do. If they do the setup with the two knights out, that is what you want to do. Um, mm. But they they don't necessarily have to have to play it like that. Um, they can also play like pawn here, for example. And then what I just push my this pawn and then takes takes. Exactly. Yeah. The whole point of pushing the pawn is that you want to push this pawn, but you want to capture with your pawn from the side. Yeah. Okay. So now let's say white plays knight here. This is a little bit different because white has pushed the pawn to develop the bishop instead of the knight. So in this position, what you want to do is actually not bring the knight out. You want to bring your bishop out. Because now, now you're attacking um, the knight and the pawn potentially. So let's say white wow. moves the knight back to g3. To attack, and then I can... Oh, actually, no, that's bad, because mm -hmm. I don't want to lose my bishop at all. Right. So I would... Maybe I can move it here? Yeah, and this is what you want to do. You want to keep the bishop on this diagonal towards this pawn on c2. Yeah. Um. So, so now let's say white pushes the pawn here. Which square do you want to push your pawn to to save the bishop? Uh... If I go there, that makes more sense, obviously, to save it, like, over here, but at this, uh, I think, actually, wait, oops, misclick, can you go back, sorry. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm, or, wait, that's fine, um, yeah, so, so here. Okay, I could do this, and then if he pushes, I go back. Right, so the move you want to play is push the pawn one square, because if you push it two squares, there are a lot of ideas where white can attack this pawn, potentially. Yeah. So the way you want to do this is push this pawn here. Now, white normally will push the pawn, but um, uh, let, let's say white were to move the bishop to d3 here. For example, um, one second, let me just... Uh, thanks, Hathor, for the raid. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. Thanks. Um, okay, so in, in this position, uh, let's, say, let's say white moves the bishop right away to d3. Okay, so I don't want to trade. Actually, I could trade because it'll double his pawns, but mm -hmm. at the same time, like you said, the Karakhan creating openings for myself. Well, the so, thing is, in this setup, when you d bring the bishop back here, you always want to trade this bishop. Really? Okay. Why? Is the light square bishop not my important bishop in this case? Well, if, well if, what, what would you do if you don't trade, I guess, is kind of the question. I could take pawn, and then if he ever took, I could take queen. Like, if takes, 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 takes. Okay, you found the one exception, so let me play the correct order. Sorry. Um, okay. So, yeah, I, I'm going to play the correct order here. So, I'm going to push the pawn first. Okay. You go back, go and, um, and now I'm going to bring the knight out. Or actually, okay. let, me, let me give you both orders. Let's say white moves the knight here. This is actually important too. Um, the knight guards the pawn, but I also want to bring the knight here to hit your bishop. Yeah. So how would you try to fight for this square where my knight is going? Fight for the square? I could just move this pawn up, potentially. Or I could... Oh, uh, wait. You're looking for that square. Uh, I could also just hit that to attack this line. Right. But actually what you want to do here is if you move the queen, I move the knight. Because the pawn supports the knight. Oh, the pawn I... is defending. Yeah, I'm trolling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I am just going to move the pawn there in that case here. No. You never, 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 ever, ever move this pawn next to the king. Okay. If you get this Karakhan, never push the pawn next to the king. Like, okay. never push the pawn. So the way okay. that you actually, the way that you fight for the square here is you move, you move your knight. Because now if I go knight here, you can just take it. For and whatever I take... reason, I <laughs> looked at my knight, but I... I guess in my head somehow I miscalculated. I thought my knight was gonna like hit this square. I don't. I, I don't know. I'm just slow, but yeah, my bad. Okay, makes sense. Got it. I move my knight out. Yeah, right. Well, no, actually, think you have a better move here. Tactics. That. Take a second. Okay. Thinking. I will think. Long and hard. Um... Long and hard, no wrong answer. Well, there are wrong answers, actually. Would it be just moving pawn up here to develop this piece? Because then if he trades queen, I could just take with a rook. Mm -hmm. And then I'm this, getting close to the castle. Yeah, this is actually a reasonable idea, but I said a tactic. Okay, so here, and then I went a pawn. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as soon as I say tactic, you're just like, you're, you're like, you're like lightning. You see it immediately. Um, yeah. So, so basically the point is that in this setup, when, when white brings the knight out to fight for the square, you bring the knight here. Now, let's say I go bishop here. You always want to trade because if you don't trade the bishops, like let's say you move the knight here, then I can just take and go like and queen d3. Bad. 
Okay, makes sense. Um, and, and also, normally what will happen here is white will throw this move in first to attack the bishop. So your next move would be right. And now white almost has to go here because if white, say, moves the bishop here um, to target this, this diagonal, you push the pawn forward to stop the bishop from attacking. Oh. Yeah, okay. And your development is very straightforward. So let me just make a make make a move like this. So what would your next move be? Yeah, you can you can play this. Um or I can go here actually and then just like you said that diagonal. Right. So it almost always you want to put the bishop on this diagonal if you have the if you have yeah. the opportunity. And and okay. your development, let's say I move the queen will always be to put the knight here. And then let's say white castles. Where would you develop? Actually, not not even where would you develop your queen. But one thing to remember is that normally, if White castles a king to this side, you're going to castle mm -hmm. a king to the same side. Okay. So, would I? No, you're I right. Queen like... c seven is the right move. Okay. And then I look to castle. Okay. You look to so castle. You pretty much here. want to match. You want to match castles. What's, yeah. You, what, why do yeah, you match yeah. castles? Like, what does what does that give me, or what type of advantage does that? Um, well, specifically, if you go this way, your king can be be attacked more easily potentially. If you if you go the other way. Mm, okay. But at the same time, it's also worth noting white can't really go this way now because he's created weaknesses here. He's pushed this pawn all the way up the board. Yeah. So so when, really when white up. plays this way, white is almost always going to be castling the king to the to the to the queen side to to the the, uh, the left of the queen. Yeah. Okay. So I'm forcing him on the side by like forcing him to push that pawn early. Right. So so here, what white normally will play is something like bishop to d3. So now again, you don't you don't want to leave the bishop here. You always want to trade the bishop. So I take, yeah. and now again, how do you finish your development? Uh, I could move just pawn up. I guess I could move my queen, but so I said development. Or, so yeah, I think pawn up probably just to get the the bishop out onto the square. Exactly. That. So yeah. So one thing to remember about the setup is almost always you're gonna you're gonna put the pawn. You're gonna have. The, this structure, like almost always. And the okay. idea is to develop the knight and then develop the bishop to one of these three squares. But you're always looking to get this sort of, this this pawn formation. Okay. Especially with these Got two it. pawns on c6 and e6 specifically. So am I kind of giving up more of the center with the Chirocon? Um. Because it feels like his pawn here is like attacking all these squares. Like a I'm, little I'm bit, like, but at like the I'm same time, this pawn can also become a weakness because what you're going to do here is let's say I, I move my bishop to this square. You, you'll now move your queen. Okay. And if I castle, your next move? Uh, I castle as well. Right. Um, and the idea, again, same idea. Bring the knight and bring the bring the knight out and bring the bishop. Or, sorry, I can't make arrows. Bring the knight and bring the bishop out. Mm -hmm. So Am I still um, going to put the bishop on the same square? Because if he castled kingside, I'm not really attacking anything here. Am I just still focusing on attacking the other side of the board? So if he castles kingside here, what you'll do is you'll you'll bring your knight out. So I mean, white... if he, I mean queenside, sorry. If he castles queenside, am I still trying to develop my piece here and like look for uh, mm -hmm. ways to attack this side, or am I looking for kingside attack? If if you have time, you will. But but first things first, you want to castle your king. You want to get your king out of the center as well. And then the idea here, long term, let's say I move rookie one, is you you bring the knight here. Because again, again, and this is also important um, as well as if you if you move this bishop out too early. White will bring the knight and attack your bishop. And this bishop is like the best piece that you have um, in, in the sort of position. So what you want to do is you you want to be aware that when you move the bishop here, there is not a knight here attacking your bishop. So let's okay. say white moves the rook. You want to put the bishop here. But if you do that, then white brings the knight into the center right away. I have a question. Mm -hmm. If I pull out the bishop and then he just, let's say he makes a random move, whatever. Is it never worth to take, take, take if I'm winning a pawn in that case? Is it still uh, you, not you worth You would totally it? do this, yeah. Okay, so if it's if it's like if I'm winning like plus one material, then it would be worth it in that case. Right. Okay, just to make sure because I know you said it's a strong piece, so I just want to evaluate like how strong. Right, but it's important that like first instead of bringing the bishop, you bring the knight out. Now mm -hmm. I'll, I'll show you why. So let's say I move the king. This is much stronger now. Do you do you see why than before? In like in terms of development, it's okay. So let, let's go back. So, so you're talking about go, like he, this. He can't go here. Yeah, yeah. Because if I go here, then if he goes here in this case, then I could just take, take, and I still have my bishop eyeing whatever. Well, actually, you can just take this. But then, what if he takes? Then I take. Oh, okay, so I'm still winning the one pawn. Okay, so I'm just looking for. 
So my, so my bishop is stronger than any other piece besides the queen on the board and the rooks maybe potentially. But well, it's not so much that it's stronger, but it's like the piece that's, that's that's most critical because your queen and your rooks are always pretty good. But it's mm -hmm. most critical that um, it's it's most critical that like you that you get the bishop to the square if you can. Um, and white does not have this knight move. Okay. Basically, just l look at white's position here. Okay, you see like this knight here. Yeah. It's guarding this pawn, so it's actually doing a, a good job here. But if you get this position where, let's just say white moves the king, you get this position, this knight is very vulnerable, first of all, because you can take it, but also the pawn is very vulnerable behind it. Yeah. So, so, so what, what would my idea be in that situation? If I got this type of situation, what's like white's best move here? White's already pawn, much okay. worse. Yeah, but like, let's say white makes like, um, what, what could he even do to defend actually? Could he, he move can't. his rook to this pile to defend that? Well, then you just take and you take, take the pawn. And take, take, yeah, okay. So if you get to this position, you're much, much better already. Um, mm -hmm. So the general setup, when, when, if your opponent, whoops, if your opponent plays like, uh, plays this, this line with this knight back to G3 um, and this pawn push, is that basically white is trying to argue that he gets a big space advantage. But if long-term, if you can get this bishop here and get the queen and the knight out, you're actually creating a lot of, um, a lot of threats. Okay, that makes a lot of sense, I get it. So let me keep let me let me give you a, and and again think 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 about the plan uh, the specific think about the plan because in most of these cases you're going to be able to get your knight and your pawn and your bishop and your knight and your queen out in this way you just need to be aware of what your opponent is doing in between um in, in, in to make sure there aren't any threats but the idea is always the same like if the, if this occurs where you get this position the idea is always to push the pawn put the knights on these two squares and then try to bring the bishop to the central square Okay. So, like, if I make, like, a this move, for example, what is the threat? The threat of that? Mm -hmm. uh, threat. Well, it's not a threat, but, I mean, what is the idea behind this move? What do I... Like, this bishop is a very nice piece here. Yeah. He's looking to maybe get into that position mm -hmm. and then trade. So, I want to create myself an alleyway to escape. Well, remember, the reason that you push this pawn is if white pushes the pawn to trap the bishop. Okay. So in this case, you just do the knight move again. Okay. What if he looks for, like, a, an idea like that? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, once again, I, I don't know why, but I I feel like my knight's moving slower squares in my head. Like, I, 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 Okay, got it. Sounds good. Understood that. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Um, so, so yeah. So the point is when white white brings a knight to to try and take the square, you bring your knight uh, to this square to prevent it. Yeah. Makes and again, sense. let's say I play bishop d3. I'm going to start playing random move wars just to make sure you have the idea down. So I, I take the bishop. Take take, and then I can move my queen. Well, or is, is it worth moving my queen, or is it delaying my development? Okay. And so I get my so... knight out or pawn up first. Let me think of a way of putting this. So since white has not pushed this pawn forward, white still has the right to castle on this, not right, but white can still castle on this side of the board without ending in trouble, without being in trouble. Okay. Like when we go forward to like, to like, um, let me just make a random position. It doesn't really matter specifically, but like, let's say we reach some position like this. You'll notice that, the, that everything is kind of under attack here. The knight, the pawn, the king is actually not very good here on this side of the, uh, this side of the board. Yeah. And now if we go back to the position that I was going right here, white white has not pushed this pawn. So when white plays something like this, um, if white castles the king, there are no weaknesses because the pawn is not extended. It's it's on its original square. Mm -hmm. so Could I move potentially this mm, to force the pawn up? Not really. I, I think in this situation, what you want to do is you want to push the pawn forward and Let's just develop. do the standard development. Bring okay. the bishop, castle your king, and move the queen to c7. So let's say I play a move like this. How do you finish your development? Right. And let's say I go bishop here. Mm-hmm. So now I'll go here. Right. And and basically at this point, what you want to do is you want to put your rooks on these two squares and mm -hmm. basically push either the c pawn or the e pawn to break the center. Most likely the c pawn, by the way. Okay, because um, I want to keep these connected towards king side. Yeah, and also if you push the pawn, like, also look at this white knight here. It, it's kind of awkward because your pawn prevents it from coming here, and your knight also stops it from coming here. So the knight is kind of dominated. It doesn't really have uh -huh. access towards your king. 
So you, you, if you, if you have the choice, you want to push this one with the rooks on okay. these two squares. That so, for example, let's just say I, I'm not actually sure what I would play as white, but if I go rook here, then I can go for that. Right, and I'm really not sure how your opponent will play, but let's just say queen c2 is played here. Right, exactly. And again, if I, if I ever push this pawn, just to be clear, you always can just take this pawn. It's just a, it's just a free pawn. Yeah, that makes sense. And down the road, I, I don't even know what white can play, but let's say white plays pawn to c4 here. Pawn to c4. I feel like doing this would be bad. No, but this is this is what you want to play because the, the, the main main issue you have here in this position is that you have less space in the center. So like you, your opponent controls more squares in the center. And when you push this pawn, let's say white captures, you can actually now capture with the bishop and the bishop is on a really good diagonal towards the king. And now knight to g4 is a very serious threat. Hmm. Okay, I see. But basically, you want to get your development and then look to push one of these two pawns in the center to challenge the white center. Because if white doesn't have a pawn here on this d4 square, then then white loses. White doesn't have more space. Right now, white has more space in the central part of the board, and you don't. But if you push this pawn and you get rid of this pawn on d4, you have much more space. Makes sense. I see. So all so the I ideas just makes sense and I see, but I actually do I see and make sense. So just just so you know, like I'm not just saying catchphrases. I understand. So I, I think I mean one of the reasons I think it makes sense to play this, besides the fact that it should be a surprise, is that it's a very the plan is very straightforward. So again, remember if I push this pawn here, uh, push pawn there, then I go here. Mm -hmm. Let's say I move the knight. What's the idea? Just because idea is more important than because if you remember the idea, the reasoning behind White's move, then you'll then you'll mm -hmm. never forget. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So now I'll go him. here. Okay, now I'll go here. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, and so now I'm going to be annoying here. I'm going to play a move that uh, kind of prevents all these ideas by moving the bishop here. Because you see, you okay. can't put the bishop or the queen where you want to. So you could do that, but actually in this case, the move that you play is, is not oh, a maybe move. Pana? Is it pana? No, no, it's, it's, no, it's, no, 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 it's a move that, you, no, but that loses to en passant. Yeah. Oh, yeah, true. So when white puts the bishop here to try and prevent your, your ideas, the move you play here is actually queen check. And the point is that if white drops the bishop back, where do you move your queen? Right, and now you're gonna get your, your happy setup. You bring the knight, you castle uh -huh. the queen, and then you put the knight forward. Mm, okay. And so let's say white decides, I, I, I want to keep the bishop here to prevent you from getting anything on this diagonal. And if white pushes the pawn here, now you actually move the knight out. And white's kind of at a tough crossroads here because if you castle the king here, what is your next move? Castle the king there. I can... Um... I would try to get my bishop out and castle, but I don't really have any squares for my bishop, so I can't castle. I can move my knight up. You can see my arrows, right? Yep. Move mm -hmm. my knight here to attack this, but it doesn't really win me anything in the long run. I can also just maybe move my rook here to get the center as a developmental move. I don't really see any crazy moves, honestly. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you'd see this because it's, it's like... Oh, um... maybe here? That? Actually, you just take the pawn. Why? Can't you just take? Do you oh, see the next oh one? I have my queen. I have my queen. Oh, oh. right. Like I wasn't sure if you'd see it because it's going. It's kind of weird, like seeing the queen yeah. going across the board like that. Mm. But basically, this is why white. And if, if white goes this way, what's your next move? White goes that way. I could. Oh, okay. I can't because the rook is there mm -hmm. now. So I can potentially get this piece here to attack the bishop and then get towards the king side. Or I can just castle this side, like you said earlier. Okay, take a second. Okay. Is there I'm anything thinking. else? That is free. I like free stuff. There is... Boom, boom. That? Well, I said free. Oh, something's free here. Oh, I see. Hmm. Oh, pawn. Right. 
Yeah, it's a, it's a free pawn. Mm -hmm. So so basically the point is that in this position white's stuck because if if I, if you go if you go this way then you lose this one. Yeah. But if you go if this you way then you lose this one. So your queen is so kind of can't, like can't castle. Right. So so this is already I think better better for uh better for black at this point because white is completely stuck in terms of the pieces that he can develop. So probably what would happen is bishop back and now you go queen to c7. And now again, if white castles this way, you do the same thing. You can bring the bishop and the, the knight and the bishop out. You can also castle if you're really, if you want to get your king out of the center first. Um, can but I castle I, queenside over there? Yeah, you can castle queenside here if you want to. Okay. Um, with the idea of bringing the knight and the bishop out and attacking immediately towards the white white king. Okay. So I know castling is obviously really good, but obviously there are points where just castling is, it's like a beta thing. You know what I mean? Like it's like, you castle because you want to make sure that your king's not in the center, but you lose a move for that. So if I'm not, my king's not under threat, is it fine to just not castle and keep it there for a while? Um, if if you if if you move? haven't developed your 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 knight and your bishop, then yes. But I would I would say once you develop your knight, your bishop, and your queen, then you're always looking to castle your king. Um. So. So, so that, that's what I would say is normally if, if, for example, let's say I move the bishop here and you do like this and this, you're, you can always play something like, just to give you an example, this, this would never happen in a game, but something like this, for example, you don't have to castle your king. You can move the queen and make sure all your pieces are developed first, like your bishops, your knights, and your queen, and then you can castle the king to either side. I see. Makes sense. Um... Would I just like if it was okay? Never mind. Mm -hmm. I was just gonna the same. I was gonna do the same stuff where you just take free pawns and stuff. Yeah, I got it all. Makes sense. Basically, in this in this setup, it's just you need to remember if White pushes the pawn, you push this pawn, and remember that this takes space. But they're also this also makes it very hard for White to castle because down the road you're gonna put max max pressure on the, both the knight and the pawn here. These these two pieces. Because yeah. then the rook never defends. So that's the fir first thing to remember is that if white pushes the pawn, you push your pawn one square, not two squares, so that you can move the bishop back. Then, then second is if white moves the knight. I know it's it's not applicable because the bishop's already been retreated, but the knight wants to take the square. So your next move is right. And then the third the third thing just in the setup to remember is if white offers the exchange, you always, you always trade, trade the bishops, and then you follow it up with this pawn push to develop your bishop to this square. Yeah. And again, if white plays bishop here. White plays bishop there. That doesn't do anything. I, just, I keep going, right? Well, actually, remember, if you put the bishop here, I can bring the knight to attack the bishop. Ah. Wait. Oh, the other one. Okay, so I just do this to try to win a pawn. No, wait. Right. No, no, no. But it's not yeah, about okay. trying to win a pawn. It's about it's just about the plan and basically seeing how your opponent reacts. So, of course, if your opponent plays correct moves, you're not going to win material. material. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So let's say castle. You castle, I can get this piece out. Right, and the, this is relatively fine. Um, so so this, this is good. So let's go back here. Let's say, um, sorry, let's go back to this position. Let's say I go bishop here to prevent your development. Right, and if I push the pawn. Right, and now the king is kind of stuck. So if I go this way, you win the pawn. And if I go this way, then you win this pawn. Right? Yeah, what if you don't castle? What if he just doesn't castle? Then his queen is just kind of stuck in the middle in that case, and then I'm just in a better spot. Well, it's very hard for white to play a move. I mean, I guess white could theoretically push this pawn so you can castle and the pawns are protected. But if, if white does something like this, um, I, I think... Actually, here you delay the castle. You This is a situation where you don't want to get the king. First, you move the bishop, and you wait to see where white is going to castle. Is white going to castle this way or is white going to go this way and when white castles this way then you can castle your king okay and again it's worth... looking in my position to match the castle is that what i'm trying to do generally yes generally i would say the only thing that you really don't want to do is you don't want to end up in this situation where the kings are on op opposite sides like this very important you don't end up in this situation but why is that that doesn't is it because it's... because basically what happens is it's easier for white to attack when white moves the knight white gets to push this pawn really quickly down oh and then king. i pretty much have to play defensive side on that side while i'm trying to attack which makes no sense so i want all my pieces towards his king right side. and also if you look at where the pawns are your pawns can't really attack even if you get a pawn here this is not a threat because i have two pawns that cover the square 
Uh, okay, that makes a lot of sense to me. So what you'd that have to do sense. is you kind of, you'd have to like, I mean, I can make some random moves. You'd, you'd need to waste a move with your queen and then to get the pawns rolling. So basically the reason that it's not good is because the white pawns are just much, much quicker here in terms of attacking towards where your king is. And also if, if I just make some random moves here, like if you think about this, even if you get the pawn to b4, the king is not directly under attack from your queen. Mm -hmm. But if we go back to this position, um, once I get the rook here and I push the pawn, your king is directly under attack immediately. Yeah, that, I, I, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense, actually. So so that's why, like, the, the one situation you don't want to end up in is um, is with the king's, with white's king over here and your king over on this side. So th that's why in this position, when white, say, pushes the pawn on move 13, you just move the bishop, you delay it. Okay. So I just, I'm waiting. It's like I'm playing. I'm playing a slow game, waiting to see what he does first. Right, but it's it's still a good move because it's still develop developing, developing your bishop. Yeah, and then I can obviously castle either side depending on what he does. Right, and White can't go this way because then you just win the pawn because of the queen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so this is the the main thing that I the the three things that are most important is first of all, um, if if White ever puts the bishop on this square, you always trade the bishop, and then you do your normal knights and bishop setup, basically the two knights and the bishop if you can. And then the second thing again is if I move the knight, what's the threat? Taking that square. Right. So when the knight comes out, the way that you prevent that, exactly. So I think that's more or less against this setup. The the basic concepts that you need to remember is when the knight comes out, um, it's to it's to prevent it's to prevent this uh, this knight square. Second one is if white pushes the pawn, where do you push your pawn? Right. And then you bring it back. And whenever white offers a trade, you always trade. I think the only mm -hmm. thing that you really need to remember, you need to remember the knight move. You need to remember the bishops. And the third, just the last thing is this pawn push. With the pawn push, white almost never can castle the king to this side. It's going to have to go to the side to the left of the left of the queen. So if you remember these three things, you'll be fine against this setup. Yeah, I, I think those are already like ingrained in my head now. So, so that's that's why I think this makes some sense because a lot of the ideas tend to flow. They're very, very similar. Um, so let's go back here. So I could see maybe he can push the pawn and if white pushes the pawn, what's your next move? Uh, this opening is very thematic, by the way. It's very, very thematic. So that, that's why that's why I'm asking what the move is without without uh, just telling you. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, let me see. my move. I can just go, no, no, I don't like that because mm -hmm. then my, this is not giving me a good angle. This pawn push doesn't seem good either because I don't really want to trade. I guess I could trade and then move here and then I'm opening up the middle. Then my queen's kind of, ex my king's kind of exposed. This doesn't really do it. Oh, I just, wait. Do I just continue developing and ignore it? Yeah, well, th this is this is why I think this is an opening that makes sense for us because it's the same general ideas in, in many of these situations. Yeah, so what you want to do is bring the bishop out um, now let's say I move bishop here. Insta trade. Again, same theme, different different position in terms of where the pawns are, but the theme is still the same. You want to trade the bishops, yeah. and then once I trade, then I can look for. Hmm. Uh, like, see, this this is kind of weird to me because I see this pawn move doesn't seem that good because even if I develop this, it's not doing anything. But then again, that pawn move might be okay because I could develop here and then move. Uh, I yeah, so also, this is the I correct guess... move, by the way. If you have the situation, you always mm -hmm. want to push this pawn forward. Why am I trying to create like a little triangle thingy with these? Well, actually what you do is you, uh, you first of all, you open this for the bishop. But secondly, what happens is when you look at these pawns, like I, I don't know what you would call this, but when you have these pawns uh, opposing each other in this line, um, what you're going to do is you're going to try to break the pawn chain. So a pawn chain is when there are two or more pawns that are connected, kind of like this. Like right now, you have you have three pawns, which form this pawn chain. Your opponent has two. Yeah. So what you want to do is you want to weaken the pawn that's most advanced. So let's say white moves the knight here. The way that you try to break the pawn chain is by pushing this pawn forward. And if he takes, then takes. Right. And now when this happens, and let's say white castles... So how do you finish your development? Uh, that doesn't seem good. That seems decent. So no, never, never, never. I'll, I'll, I can't repeat this enough or state this enough. Don't look to move the knight to the edge. The way you do this here I, is you bring the knight. I thought going to be in the middle. 
Okay, knights always want to be in the middle of the board because it has more attacking squares. Right, and essentially what you're going to do is, let's say I move the knight out here, is it doesn't really matter whether you castle or not, but, but what I'd recommend is just bring this knight out first or bring the knight to this square. Both squares are fine, actually, but bring what the knight out he first and then like castle that. king. What if he does something like that? Okay, I can't so, go here and I can't go there. So you'd what actually go bishop up? forward, yes. Okay. And now let's say white tries to attack the bishop. Right, and let's say white pushes the pawn. Right, now I'm going to go here. So I want oh. one more move, one more move from you here. Because again, this is very much about the concepts. I think if you remember the ideas and the concepts, the actual order of the moves you can figure out, but you should remember what was what was the main thing that you wanted to uh, wanted to do when you push this pawn at the start? When I, when so I push I'll go the back to move three. I'll go, I'll go back all the way okay. back here. So what's the th what what do you want to do here when you push this pawn? It's to get a line for kind of my bishop, right? Right, Activate. but also it's to break the pawn chain. It's to try to create a weakness oh, yeah. on the pawn that's most advanced. So I would now, guess it's queen to b8. I don't know if that's the right move, but just to put it behind. You could this, do that, but actually, pawn. you don't really you don't really want to do it with the queen. The move that you want to play here is move the knight here. Okay. And now you put extra pressure on this pawn. And now white develops the rook. Now you castle your king out of the center. Mm. And long term, what you want to do here is um, is eventually look to bring the rook here and try to attack on this this line um, down the road. So so for mm. example, let's say here um, I don't know what, what your opponent will play. Let's say they play rook here. You'd bring the rook to c8. Um, and I don't know. Let's say white plays a move like pawn to h3. You will now push this pawn. I want to push that pawn. Right. So, so the reason you want to do oh, this, yeah. So, kill. so let's say the point is you want to push the pawn to remove this knight, but also you want to be able to bring your bishop back to this diagonal potentially to attack the white king. Ah, yes. Okay. So, so I mean, this this won't happen, of course, but but the main point is that when you go all the way back to the start of this. Actually, you know what? No, let me give you something else. Let's say white moves the knight here. I'll give you a different move, something that, that will be easier to remember. Um, so when white brings the knight here to bring the knight forward, push this pawn right away. What if he just takes? No, no, I this one. Oh, oh, oh other pawn? Are, do you not other see them? Pawn. Are you not seeing my moves? Now I do, now I do. It was, I think it lagged a bit. Okay. Well, I think we're also maybe trying to move at the same time, actually. Oh, uh, yeah, it could be, could be, actually. So you, so you push this pawn. So now when I move the knight here. Uh, now I need to back my piece. I can go here. Right, exactly. And and basically now your bishop's still on this really nice diagonal towards the white king. Yeah, it seems super And the knight's sort of out of place. And what now you you'll do the same thing. What, what, what if you went for some type of idea where here? Mm -hmm. So now you'll, you'll have to trade. And now you'll bring your knight out. And let's say I move the rook. And you'll castle here. And again, it's going to be very similar ideas. Let's say I move the rook here. You'll 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 bring. You can either push this pawn or just bring the rook right away. And the, and the idea again is to probably move the knight and try to bring it in, but also create pressure towards the white white pawns down the board. Mm. Okay. So let's let's go back then. Um, so again, in this so so first thing is again remember if, if white pushes the pawn you develop the bishop and then you push the pawn to create this uh the, the pawn chain and now if white okay. offers the exchange i hints to take it mm -hmm. continue my right. pawn chain development right and now when i go here i can check you could but remember what was the point what's the thing you want to do when the pawns are kind of opposing when the pawn, I need to create weaknesses on that side. So right, you want to break the pawn. Chain. Oh yes, okay, okay, hundred percent. I, I mean, I know it's only two pawns, but it's still it's still a chain. It's still, yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna now I'm gonna actually not let you. I'm gonna push the pawn so that if you capture, I just capture back and I still support the pawn that's more advanced. Mm -hmm. So now what so you're what? gonna do is to finish the development, you'll bring the knight here to guard this pawn, because if you bring this knight out first, yeah, I just yeah, take the I'll pawn. Keep... Okay. So you bring this knight. Now let me just castle the king. And now if you were to just bishop... take the pawn. Wait, can you go back? What do you mean you just take the pawn? Isn't my pawn defended by my bishop still? Well, no, I meant if you block with this knight. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Or not block, but if you def defend with this knight. Um, mm -hmm. 
If you defend with this knight, then I take the pawn, and you're behind by one pawn. Yes. So that's why first you want to bring the knight to defend the pawn. Now let's say white castles. And now, you, now if you move the bishop, you'll see that your knight has trouble being developed because you don't really want to move it to the side of the board and it's hard to get your king castled. So the way that you do it is you bring this knight here. Say white moves the bishop to e3. Now, uh... You could go there, but the, the square okay. you're actually looking to go to is to go knight here. And again, you're trying to put pressure on this point because if white ever captures, you can take this one in the center. Captures, captures, okay. So 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 white white will probably develop the knight, and now how do you finish your development? Uh I could just move this here and then look to castle that, that side. Right, and this is exactly what you want to do. So let's say white pushes the pawn here. Mm-hmm. And now I, I don't know what white would do, but let's just say white moves rook here. Now, now that you've castled, you've finished all the development, the way that you want to do is you want to play towards the queen side. So what you do is you take. Mm -hmm. And now you move the rook. And the idea is really rook, straightforward. Yeah. You want to bring the queen yeah. here, double it up, uh, remove the knight, and just attack down towards the side of the board. I see. Yes. So let's go back. Okay, so so when you move this bishop here... Yeah, I'll, I'll, so when you move the bishop here... Again, if I move the bishop here, what was the reasoning? You just always want to trade. Mm -hmm. And here... Right, so I'll move the knight. Right, because you want to attack these two pawns. Yeah. And when I push the pawn? Then I want to get my piece Well, you want to develop the knights, but you can't move yeah. one of the knights. Right. So first you develop this one, support the pawn. And then after castles, I can develop my other one. Mm-hmm. And after that, I develop again. Right, and now knight here. Then after that, I can look for this. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'll go here. Right, mm-hmm. Exactly, the next move, you're just gonna bring the queen and double up the rooks on this open file, because you're the only one who can really control it. Like, white goes here. You'll go queen to b6, attacking the pawn. And if white goes rook here, what's your next move? Mm-hmm. And you just basically win something. If I take your rook, you take the queen. If I move the queen, then you take take the rook on c2. So if takes, 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 t I'm winning by a lot. Okay. Right. Okay. You're you're just a, you're ahead by by a queen for a rook. Mm. So um, let, let me go back. Okay, so let's go back to this position. White can also develop develop one of the knights here, like knight here. Um, you're trying to ask me what my move is here? Mm-hmm. Uh, I would just, I could continue my pawn chain. Exactly, this is what you want. This is exactly what you want to do. You want to basically push the pawn with the bishop outside, and then you can move your bishop. So let, let's say white, um, Let's say I don't know what White would do. Let, let's just say White plays G4 because the guy you're play, playing playing as I know who's who's coaching him. So if White pushes the pawn, where do you move the bishop here? I retreated right. A bit. Okay. And now let's say I move this this knight. Let's say I move the knight here to try and bring the knight to attack the bishop. In this situation, you have to um you, you kind of have to. Yep. Yeah, you know what? Why not? Just play H6. It's it's completely fine. And if I go knight here. Right. Um, and let's say white moves the bishop. Exactly. And now when white captures. Uh, I look to get my other, or break the center first. Right, exactly. You look to break these pawns. And um, and now if I develop, well, actually here you see white can't even, white he can't, can't even connect the pawns. The pawns. Well, he has to trade and then I get my bishop out. Right. And if he moves the bishop here, in this case, you actually just take right away. Takes. And now what you would do is, um, again, same thing. Bring this knight here. And you want yeah. the knights on these two squares, basically, so they create a, a lot of pressure on this pawn in the center here. Mm -hmm. So so this is this is what I would, would recommend against the setup if they play this. Um, and also, if they push the pawn here. Uh, so again, I'm threatening to trap your there. bishop. Yeah. 
Right, and this is completely fine. This should be, this should be good enough. Um, same kind of thing. Move the bishop back. Also trade the bishops if they ever offer it. And otherwise, again, it's going to be some combination with the knights and the pawn push, and the knights being on these this square and this square. But you're always looking all, to push that pawn. Is the Karakhan only in a response towards e5? Uh, towards e4, or yes. E4, e4. Yeah. Um, so I can give you something on d4 push. too, if you if you if you if you want. Um, but if someone say for example plays a different opening, the Karakhan just doesn't apply at all. Like it, uh, it's same well, it's funny. You still could do it. Or... Like, let's say White pushes the pawn. You still could push this pawn and this pawn, but it's just called a different name. Okay. So, like for example, you can have some position like like this, for example, with the idea of bringing the bishop and pushing the pawn, but it's just called a different opening because of White's White's opening moves. Okay. Yes. But yes, you can still play it. Like even 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 something like this, you can still play pawn here, and on this pawn, you can just push the pawn forward. It's just called the Slav defense because White has pushed these two pawns instead of the two pawns in the center. But okay. it's still a setup that does work. And in fact, I think you were, didn't you play this against uh, Hutch? Uh, yeah, and then I created a stone wall. Right, so actually, you know what? Maybe you can just do it regardless of the first move. So like you just do, do this and then yeah, just push these pawns like this. Okay. It's just called something different, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so. If 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 you want to look at more of the the e4 opening, we can. We can lo also look a little bit at the stone wall if you're if you're worried about it as well. I say I kind of forgot the stone wall. Can you just give me like a quick sure? Okay, so the quick rundown is first of all, um, you you want to put the bishop here, so you want to you know put the bishop behind this pawn triangle basically, um, and like you do in in many, in, in all these types, even even the Karo Khan, like it's always it's always the same thing. Like if we go back just just to show you again like so you can conceptualize it even even when you get even when you get this idea is always to put the bishop so it's like when you push this pawn next to the queen almost always you try to get the bishop to this dark square two squares ahead of your queen and it's no different in in this opening either it's the same thing you want to put the bishop on the dark square now hutch of course is uh was very very good he played bishop f4 which is not a move that i would expect anybody else to play um but what you did i think was fine you moved the bishop I think it was something like something like this, if I remember correctly, um, where you bring the knight out, the bishop comes forward, uh, you castle, castle, and you bring the knight forward. And the idea yeah. is very straightforward. You want to put this knight here and just attack right away, bring the rook over, and then try to push the pawn and remove this defender in the knight, which guards the pawn. So yes. it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's very straightforward. Um, like if, if white pushes this pawn you'll you'll move the queen here let's say white pushes this pawn what's your next move uh wait pushes that pawn do i even care about that pawn does that no you don't the, the when you play the stone wall you're you're focused on what uh, same idea right? yeah yeah but there's the, that's not the actually the square that you go to here is this square oh 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 this square because if he takes takes then i'm getting okay yeah what I, what I, I forgot, do I take into the middle here? Like if, say he mm -hmm. takes, would I take with that one or would I take with the-, the uh, You would take with a pawn that opens up the line for the rook, but there's one other thing that's important. So when white moves uh, the knight, you now try to attack in the center immediately, get rid of the second pawn behind. Because what it does is it frees your bishop to uh, to have space on this ooh. diagonal. Ah, nice, I see. Which is why like actually when you play this, like it's, it's very much a straightforward idea because right now your bishop is the bad piece. You see how these pawns are, pawns kind of block the bishop and the bishop has no yeah. space. Yeah, I remember um, I was playing, I felt like I couldn't get it out. I was like trying to look for a maneuver like that, but I think- Right, I which is actually a very maneuver, good maneuver but... in most cases. So, so, but the point is that since you're kind of making this huge, huge uh, concession with the bishop, you immediately just go for the attack first. You just try to attack immediately right down towards the white king and you try to remove the knight by pushing your pawn. So, okay. so, so the idea is very straightforward. And even if they don't play Bishop F4, they play something, um, let's go like this position, E6, E3. Again, it's the same thing. You bring the Bishop out, you push the pawn. I'll move the Knight. What's your next move? Push the pawn, move my Knight. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can look. Actually, I'm gonna run to the restaurant. I'll be right back. One second. Okay, take time. Thank God, I know what you're talking about. Um, okay, let me think, chat. I'm looking for something maybe like this, right? Haha, <laughs> potential. If I go here, then I can look to castle, and then I can also look to get my rook out, and then I can move up, left, right, up. Um, and then if I also can look for something like this ideas, because then uh, something that he said makes sense here, and then I can look for, ooh, I see. 
I can go here. And then when he makes a move, I go here. And then when he makes another move, go back, I go, ha ha. And then he has to move. And then I have like the complete direct opening into the back line. I think at least something like that. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm back. Okay. Welcome back. Sure. Uh, yeah, I made a bunch of moves. I don't know where I'm at now, actually. I just okay. Stuff that's, that's fine. That's fine. No worries. We'll, I'll just get it back there in one second. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what type of magic you use, but when I like, I don't know, when I misclick, somehow you bring it back. <laughs> okay. But... Well, I just look, I look at the notation. I can tell right away what the moves are. Um, so, so that's what I just do. Okay. So, so back to, um, back to the stonewall opening the idea is just very straightforward it's always to put the bishop here push the push the pawns and at some point you want to bring the knight to the center square and attack immediately so like if white plays here here which what's your next move sorry no stone actually no i need to put pawn yep pawn up and then i can look for that right exactly so now i castle mm -hmm. i'll bring my knight out That's that's fine. Yeah, I mean, probably I'd castle first, but that's castle first, yeah. it, it doesn't really matter though. It's it's completely fine. So let's then move the queen. Right, and now let's then move this pawn. Uh, I can look for. Right. Actually, no, I don't think I. It, it, do I still do that? Because you... the reason I wouldn't do that is I feel like I'm wasting a move. Because say hypothetically speaking, he uh, looks to trade and then i take isn't that one move of me moving my rook a little wasted because i don't really gain anything off that well okay so i think if takes and you move the knight here let me see if it yeah okay you know play the play the other order first so so first things first move the knight okay bring your knight into the game mm -hmm. and now here you actually will still bring the rook up and the point being that if white takes you take back and now i move the knight and this is important by the way this is very important so look at the when you look at the white pawns here these two pawns specifically white has not pushed this pawn so like if you ever try to open up the center here by pushing the pawn white will just capture and win a pawn uh-huh so because it's white has not pushed and made sure that your pawns are safe the way that you play this here is you actually just again go for go for the checkmate with rook h6 okay what's his defender can't you just go here and that's not checkmate at all well or yes no. but now you can actually no no here you actually go queen here and you're threatening to take the pawn because the king is pinned ah, here. Ah, I see. Yes. And now essentially everything is coming into play. Your knight's coming here. Like, let's just say white moves the king. Now you bring your knight over. And your next two moves, basically, I'll just make a random move like rook here. Your next move will be pawn here. And now let's say white takes the pawn. Do you see the next move for black? I can take. No, wait. Yes. Because I well, want to free up this line, don't I? Well, this actually just ends the game. Oh, wait, huh? What? Huh? Hmm. Ah, I see. Yes. Ah, oh, because I'm opening up my light squared bishop that is stuck doing nothing. Right, and this is actually just checkmate. If I capture the rook, that's just checkmate. Hmm. And if I move the rook again, it's the same thing. It's still checkmate. Ah, uh, yes. So, so the whole idea when you play the stone wall is not like, don't be wor don't worry about the, like the, like normal development. The whole point is to try to attack. You just want to go right after your opponent's king. Like this bishop is a great piece because it's aiming towards the pawn next to the king. And you just go rook f6, rook h6, and just go for the checkmate right away. Because you made, because what's happened is your bishop is not very good here on c8. It's behind this wall of pawns. So you basically accept that you're making some weaknesses or there's some squares, some holes in your, your position here in the center, but you're gonna go right after the white king and go for checkmate immediately. So it's a very aggressive opening and I do like it. I thought, especially against Hutch, who was a better player, it, it made a lot of sense. So I, I think it's a very good opening choice. Okay, thanks. Um, so, all right, I just want to show you like two or three more things in this, this Karo Khan opening because I, I could see, um, I, I, I could see, 
Are you are you trying to eat a can? You have my camera open? Oh no no I said can. My chat said you're trying to eat a can. Oh uh, sorry. Um, okay. No no what the hell okay. what are you talking about? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So just just a couple other thing, a couple other quick lines to look at. So on knight c3, what's your move? <laughs> Sorry about that. Knight. Um, I can boom. boom right. So no. this is always your idea. Always push the pawn in the center. So so now I'm gonna now, put is the stone wall. Wait for the stone wall and the Karakhan. Is it c6 or is the stone wall different? And I go d5. It's first? the same. Same. In in the, okay. C6. Yeah. So what, okay. what should make me decide whether I go for stone wall or go for Karakhan? And there's no difference. It's just a white setup. Um, okay. But but think about it this way. So in this position, like you can't really ever push this pawn here because the white pawn will always capture it. So it's yes. just when the white pushes this one, you can't really create that uh, the the pawns on these four squares the way that you can in the other one. Mm. So the Karakhan or the stone wall is more so when he moves d4 instead of e4. When he moves e4, the the Karakhan looks a little better than the stone wall. Right, because if you think about it, like when when you reach this position, there's no pawn in the center for white, so you can kind of you can kind of grab the central square immediately. Yes. So 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 that that's why yeah the the Karo Khan is is it's different. So just I'll show you a couple other. So let's say this happens, um, and, and your opponent plays queen to f3 because this is also a move that your um that your opponent could play here. So in this one, what I'm going to advise you to play is uh is to push this pawn forward one square. So basically support the pawns. Or actually, should you play this line or the other one? Let me think for a second. Um, yeah, I'm, I, in, in this one, I, I want you to push the pawn here to support the center. Um, now let's say white pushes this pawn to d4, which I think is, is a logical move. And now I want you to uh, take this pawn. Yes. So white will take back. And now bring this knight out to f6. Uh, basically, the reason you don't grab this pawn is what happens is white can push the queen back. And then once you move the queen back, white will just move this bishop, bring this rook, and your king will, even though you're up one pawn, your king is under attack immediately here. I not felt that all. So, so yeah. that's why in this one, just bring the knight out. So offer the trade. If white takes, you you can take with the pawn or the queen. It do doesn't really matter. Um, and if white brings the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably queen takes is fine. And again, it's going to be the same thing when I trade the queens. Would I look to castle queen side on this case since my pawn structure is really messed up on king side? Um, probably yeah, but but more than that, when I develop my knight, where are you gonna put your bishop? Uh, um, hmm. it's the I, it's the same it's the same no, 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 same no, no. formation I, though it's the same formation. Oh, I, I just go here. I, I thought the bishop could, or the knight could attack my bishop. That's why mm -hmm. I didn't. Right, so so the thing is, you just want to put the bishop on the same square. When you get this formation, the bishop will always go here unless unless it can't. So okay, um, and then I guess the one last thing in this setup is, let's say white moves the bishop here to pin the knight and the queen. You can just very simply move your move your bishop up. And again, if white takes back, you can take with the bishop or with the pawn. It doesn't really matter. Although here, I probably would just recommend playing a position like this and, and the way that you'll you'll develop your pieces here is you see how your your pawns are like this uh-huh because it's an end game without queens on the board you can push this pawn and develop the bishop this way down on this long diagonal would i not look to push this pawn because if takes then takes and i un right but first of all it, it weakens your pawns the pawns can be attacked very easily like something like this and your pawns are you're going to lose this pawn uh -huh. immediately but yeah. secondarily, even beyond that, when you push this pawn, white can always bring the bishop here, and the bishop has a really nice diagonal. Mm -hmm. So you, you don't really want to touch touch any of these pawns. You want to leave them here. Instead, push this pawn to move the bishop. Let's say I develop bishop here. I'll just move the bishop to this square. And now you can move the knight. And you're, what you're looking to do in this position is to castle the king, and at some point, push this pawn to open up the bishop um, on this long diagonal towards towards where the knight and the pawn are. Hmm. Yes. Um, but I do think this is a possible line that could happen. I'm trying to think what else could happen that would surprise you if you if you push the pawn here. Um, and also, let's just say white takes the pawn. If white takes pawn, then I can take back. Okay, now I'm going to push this pawn. Then I can continue that. Right. Okay. Now I'm just going to develop my bishop. I will also develop my bishop. 
Mm -hmm. Actually, yes. Yeah, so again, it's the same thing. You almost always look to put the bishop on the square when you have any sort of formation. Like this is always going to be the optimal square. If you can't do it, you can't you can't do it, but always look to see if that square is available for the bishop cuz it's the best square in the position for your bishop. Cuz it always so keeps if targets. You, if he went here in this case, would I just drop it back or would I look for a check? Okay, here? so you're you're going to be annoying and find the best move. So I'm going to have to be precise then. So what you're okay. going to do here and and you're you're good enough that you should be able to remember this. Um mm -hmm. Let me go back one move. Okay, so here what you're gonna do first is you're gonna bring your knight out. And so okay. I'm gonna bring the knight here and now you're gonna put the bishop on the square. And so now when I move the knight here, what is the, there's a there's a reason that I brought my knight out first. So I, I wanna see if you can, um, no. So, so the, what, like, okay, let's go back. Um, so in this position, I'm attacking your bishop, right? Your bishop mm -hmm. is your best, it's like the piece that's on the best square here. So I either, I either need to make up for it by winning a piece or I you have need to, to... Well, basically you have to retreat, retreat the bishop here. Like if you, if you make yeah. a queen check, I can just move my pawn. I can also move my bishop. Um, and now your bishop yeah. is under attack. So so let's go back here. So let's, 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 let's put this position on the board. Is there a difference here between the previous position, this position and, um, and, and this position? Do you see this position? Yeah. And this position. My knight is a tool. Well, your knight's developed, but there, there's one other very important factor here. Wait, can you switch positions again? So, okay, this position and this one, yeah. So you see this position? Yeah. And now I'll go to this position. Aha, uh -huh, I see. Okay, I don't really see, honestly. I understand that both knights are out, but I don't really see what's going on here. So, so I what guess you... I could just retreat mm -hmm. here and then look for something. Well, no, the thing is you retreat here. So the reason that you, your move is very annoying to me is ah. because I'll tell you why. So, so let me go here, um, or to, sorry, to uh, this position. If I move the bishop back, what white can do is move the bishop here and threaten to fork your king and your rook. Mm. So what you want to do is that's Couldn't why- I just do this in that case? Wait, can you go back? Like, sure. Mm -hmm. Couldn't I just do, wait, huh? Whoa. You go back. Uh, Wait, what? Where was the, the fork? Okay, so the fork was the one you played the wrong order. Let me go back. This is the correct order, but let, let me show you. So the fork was in this position because you did not move your knight first. Mm -hmm. So Could then my knight here, just go here to defend that square though? Yeah, your knight can go here, but now my bishop is on the ideal diagonal as well. And yeah, your knight so is kind of stuck on the edge of the board. The edge. Yeah, okay, it makes sense. So, so that's why, like, and think about it this way also. So, like, let, let's go back to this position on move five after bishop to d3. Like, white has a bishop on a very nice diagonal, too. Um, if I go back here. So, the bishop is on a really nice diagonal for white as well. So, you need your own diagonal. So, that's why you go here. And now, let's say I develop. Because, I, I, I mean, I need to protect this pawn as well, by the way. Yeah. So now you go here, no. and when I bring the knight here, you can just retreat. So you keep the bishop on the diagonal. There's mm -hmm. no idea of white making any forks anymore because your bishop controls the square. And then let's say white castles the king here. One, one reason that you don't want to overextend too early or move your knights and bishops too far into your opponent's position is because you can push stuff back. So here what you do is you push the pawn mm -hmm. and you push, you push the knight back. So now I have to move the knight to like, let's just say this square. And now again, yeah. you can do the same development. You can bring the knight to both. Both of these squares are good. Yeah, and this this is objectively the be the best square. Um, let's say I push the pawn, and now I think you can just castle the king here. Or if you're really worried, you can even just push this pawn first. Um, Could I do something like this to create a double attack against that pawn, or would he, in any case, just move? Like if I went here, just go here and like defend. Well, it? I think in this position, what you want to do is um, you, you want to get your king out of the center of the board. Mm -hmm. Um, and basically, the long-term idea here is you have better pawns in the center relative to white's pawn. So what you would try to do is, let's just say I move the rook here, you would actually now push this pawn to try and build a big center here with these two pawns. And long-term, I'm just going to make a move like this. So you, you would push the pawn forward, threatening to fork the knight and the bishop. Let's say I trade mm -hmm. the pawns. Um, and I don't know, let's actually... Actually, I'm going to get forked here either way because I, I have the bishops and the knights all in the yeah. central squares. So let me go back here. Let's just say I, I play a move like um, like this. Okay, so you push the pawn. I take capture. 
And now I go bishop here. The way that you would actually attack now is you would push the pawn forward. Let's say white moves the knight. And now I think you should see the next move. Okay. Hmm. Next move. Hmm. Let's see. Do the calculations. Two, four. Boom, boom. I also have ideas of this, but that's also not that good. This, that, that. Okay, so actually, the move that you'd play here is you'd move the queen up. Oh, wait, huh? Oh, wait, huh? Why? Oh, oh, mate. Yeah, I see. Right, because now now you have the queen on queen on the diagonal here, um, mm -hmm. to 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 create a checkmate. Yeah, so, makes sense. It's like a puzzle. So so yeah, so this is kind of the point of, of, of why you want to um why 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 you want to play like this is basically you just create this battery and you create a checkmate here. So um so this is what I would recommend. And this this is why like in a position like this, it's not very um it's it's not it's not great 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 for white so the point is basically you you want to put the bishop on this diagonal and get your king out center of the board here um and just basically try to finish your development and then attack on the diagonals towards the white king so let's go back so so let's say um in this position let's say white plays d4 you go here white takes and plays pawn to c4 so now in this case you don't really have time to defend so you you push this pawn forward now let's say white brings a knight out you, you move your knight here and let's say white develops a knight in this case you don't actually put the bishop forward two squares for a couple of reasons first of all white can move the the, right white can push the pawn and white can also move the bishop and pin the queen and the knight here yes so what you would do in this case is you push the bishop forward one square so that now if white goes here you can castle and there, there are no issues because there's no pin really you can always just move the knight forward so like for example let's say white moves the bishop um, you would just move your knight, white trades, you take back. And if white castles, you can now move the rook over. What if white, like say in this case, mm -hmm. uh, let me see, I take, he takes, I take. Don't I lose my dark squared bishop and I'm doubled up, so I'm just in a losing position here? Uh, actually not, no, because this pawn is very, white's pawn is very weak as well. So let's say white, um, well, make a move for white because it's easier for me to see what you're thinking um, rather than what I'm thinking, so, so okay. Well, but now I just take. Thank you. Oh, okay. Never mind. I yeah, see. Technicalities. Um move. I can go here. Okay, so now I'm gonna go rook here. And now I'm going to make another move. I will look for ideas of I see. So the normal <laughs> move yeah, but now I just take. Take. Okay, thank you. You're oh, very yeah. generous okay. with your knight. I <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Maybe I don't see, honestly. I think I'm learning, though. Honestly. So, okay, so what, what white should do here is probably castle, but now what you do is remove the knight by pushing the pawn. And now after knight g4, um, very simply just knight c6 puts a ton of pressure on this pawn on d4. You could even play something like queen to d6 as well, and, and just there's a lot of pressure here in the center. Whereas your pawn, this double pawn, is very safe. Um... On, on e4 because you can always even move the pawn to hit the knight and support the uh support the pawn on e4 so um so yeah so that, that that's what i would recommend if if you see something like this setup is just remember in this one where white tries to put the pawns in the center like this you can just move the bishop and um and castle your king out of the center of the board here okay uh, Makes sense. i think i'll probably watch this vod over honestly like, yeah yeah no no i mean obviously obviously i'm trying to think yeah. what else could be played that would surprise you so Okay, let me let me think. Um, oh, right, and then one last thing because this setup could occur again. So a knight here. Let's just go over these last two little setups very briefly. Right, and let's say I move the queen out, so I'm attacking your pawn. Um, right, exactly. Yeah, and now if I push the pawn, uh, if you push that pawn, I'm looking to break the center. Well, no, you break the center when we, when when we. Oh have the yeah, because there's no thing. there's no pawns that are even right. right yeah, now. you you want them like yeah. on the opposite diagonals. Um, uh, let me. I could just go. Uh, huh? Hmm. 
Yeah, and that, that's that's one move. Um, so so okay, that's fine. And again, if I move the knight here, I'll move three. What knight? I don't see it move. Oh oh, there we go. Yeah. I don't see it move still. Wait, whoops, whoops. Okay, do you see the knight okay. now? Now I see it. Now. Okay, I see yeah. It. Okay. If you do knight move, then I can. Let me see. Would I still just move pawn up? Well, no, in this one, you actually take the pawn. Um, you take the pawn. Wait, oops, takes. And now you bring the knight out. And then takes, takes. Right, no and... What happened. Right, and now you're going to develop the bishop to the same square castle, your king. And again, just... Okay, so let's look at the couple of moves again. It's like, let me refresh my page. Can I refresh sure. the page? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should, you should. Well, yeah, if you, if you aren't, if you are in the window, I'll just reinvite you. Okay. I'm in the window now. Okay, now it's a lot smoother and cleaner. Okay. Mm-hmm. So take, Where are we okay. At? Okay, so I'll here? go pawn here. Oh, wait, let me flip my board out. I was sure. confused for a second. Okay, pawn there. I can look for this. Right, so again, right square. So now I'm just going to develop. I'll put the bishop on this square this time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could potentially move pawn up. I don't really see what I gain from that. I could move this. That does something. I could also just castle as a beta move. I could do this, but I feel like this is probably my best to get this out there. But then again, no, 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 no. That's bad because if I even go here, then I have no squares here because that pawn is actually right. There. So remember, you you want to castle your king pawn. here. Okay. So so yeah, so you, you castle the king. Mm-hmm. And then I can, ooh, I have an open file if he doesn't castle instantly. And even if he does castle next, then I take the whole entire file. Right, so so, so castles, I'll castle. Right, exactly, this is good. So I'm just gonna keep playing normal moves. I'm gonna play this move. What does this move prevent? That move prevents me from looking for boom, boom, boom. Like that thingy? Right, well, it stops you from developing your bishop, basically. And my bishop, yeah, that's the other piece. So, so the, again, what is the what is the maneuver that I taught you? It's a it's a weird maneuver, but remember, your knight is kind of you want it. You want to push everything over towards the other side of the board here. Uh, bo, bo, bo. Yeah, exactly. And so, if I push the pawn, right, okay, and I'll just move the bishop. Okay, and I'll move the queen. And actually, you know what? I'll give you a slightly different different maneuver here. So what I'm what I what I want you to do is, like in this case, move the bishop. I move mm -hmm. the rook, and now I want you to line it up again. I want you to bring the bishop back and just line up the checkmate ideas towards wow. the white king. So like let's say I just play like rook here. What's your next move? Right now, if I go here, how do you? There's a. I want to see if you can find the tactic here. To find mate. Yes. Uh. Okay. Thing is, that's not obviously mate because he always has a hidden square, and then also there's this piece that's guarding it. So I would need to kick this piece ideally, but I also need to find multiple other openings. Uh, let's see, tactics. Think, Mo. Think. Use your big brain. It's very large. For something like this, he can take, but that doesn't really give me anything because actually I could take back, but then takes takes. So I'm not going to really gain anything overall. I'm just trading down, but then I'm getting a nice little bishop for my knight, which isn't honestly that bad. There must be something better. I was trusting me to find this. So I can look for something like this. This does nothing really. I can look for this. I can also just look to push the pawn to potentially kick. But then if I push my pawn all the way there, I'm going to completely block out my diagonal. I can look for something like, hmm, I see. Hmm. I could. Boom, boom. Now it's too slow. It doesn't really get anything. If I go here, that just takes. But then he loses the defender, and I go here. But then he could just go here. But then I have mate. Ah, I see. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, you found that it. That is it. Yeah, so like yeah. when you move the knight here, you try to remove the defender. Um, yeah, but now you just take. And everything's under attack. Mm, I see. So yeah, this is just something to be mindful of if you can line this up correctly, where you, you create this threat and your opponent uh, has no way to prevent the checkmate. And this is actually just very, this is just clearly winning for, for black. Although I'll make one more move and I just want you to find the right order. So I'm gonna move my bishop here. You move bishop there. Then I can look for check, takes. Wait, let me, I was just clicking buttons, honestly. No, that's winning, because boom, boom, boom. 
Uh, yeah, and you're up by one one piece. I, basically, I want to make sure you didn't play the wrong order. Because if you do this order, then it's even material still. Yeah. But if you make the check first, then it's just winning. So, yeah, I I mean, I think this is this should be pretty good for you. You're, you definitely have the basics down. I, I think one of the reasons I like this as an opening for you is just because it's more, I think, more aggressive in general. You're, you're going to get more attacking chances than you would if you play like E4, E5 specifically. So... Do you have any? Do you have any questions? No. Okay. Not really. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess the main thing is, yeah, just go back and watch certain parts. I'll, I'll see if there's something that I can send you that might help a little bit for memorization. But I think in general, um, this this should be this should be pretty good. So I, I think I think you have good chances tomorrow. Okay. We don't need to downplay me, Hikaru, here. Like, I don't think Charlie has a chance versus me. Like, I don't even think this close. I'm not here prepping for Charlie. I'm here prepping for the future. I'm mm -hmm. ready to take on. Wait, I, okay, I, have a, I do have one question, actually. Sure. So I know how there's a winner's bracket and there's a loser bracket. Right. I don't know much about it because I haven't done my enough research. Let me, Is there uh, a world or a possibility where I should throw the game and lose to Charlie to get into the loser bracket, to dominate XQC again, to dominate Elrob, and then make my way to the finals and actually be... I, do, I actually don't like it if I'm, if I'm looking... Let, 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 me see if I, let me see if I have it. Um, it's the right one. Let me see. One second. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just checking my, my scenes. One second. Um, one second. Let me, let me, let me just get the, uh, let me, let me just see if I can pull up the bracket. One second. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, right. One second. Okay. So l l let me see. So right now you're what you're in. You're, you're technically in third place, I think. I don't know for sure, but... Um, in my bracket or in general? Yeah, I mean, the thing, though, is, like, if, if you're if you're in loser's bracket, there, there are going to be some dangerous people on the other side, too. Like, there, there's going to be Ludwig, like, probably, like... <laughs> okay, sorry, my bad. I keep going. Okay, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, yes, the theoretic... You're not going to play XQC again, though, I don't think, if you were end up in loser's bracket. Like, you, you would play E-Rob, though. Um, <laughs> Sorry, like, you lost the Foosley. Like, come on, Hikaru. Like, come on. Like, you lost the Foosley. Like, like, I'm not even here flaming. Like, Leslie's my friend, but, like, she picked up chess four days ago, and she thought the castle moved in, like, the, in, in diagonals. Like, like you know. Yeah, I yeah. mean, the, the only people in the bracket who could be dangerous, I think, are probably Ludwig and, and Slicker, but they're both on the other side, potentially, so... Yeah, um, yeah but it... Well, yeah, I wouldn't throw anyway. I'm, I was, yeah. I'm, I'm joking, obviously. But hypothetically speaking, I beat Charlie. Me and Hutch make it out of the bracket. Who do I face? Am I facing someone from Group A, C, or D, or is it like going to be randomized and found out later? It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nasty pairing. Okay, well, oh, nasty pairing, what does that mean? It would mean you're playing you're playing Boy Boy, I think. Oh, boy! Yo, that's actually crazy that I suck so much at chess and Charlie's so much better than me. Um, <laughs> like, wow, I'm not prepared to. Well, try. it's it's Dude. it's your it's your match. Do what do what you got to do. I'm I'm not gonna advise you one way or the other. Um, but yeah, it's you can you can do what you got to do. You you got to do what you got to do. Um, and uh, I mean, the, the, I, I guess the only thing is if you somehow made champions bracket and you won and Hutch lost to XQC, you would you would actually play the second player in Group A. So. Um, again, it's 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 your match. You do what you got to do, um, but but just uh, have fun. Okay, so I need XQC to upset Hutch, but then if I beat Charlie, still Hutch is still number one because he has the tiebreaker over me. No, um, I'm not sure if he does. I I, I don't know. I, it's not clear to me who is the tiebreaker. Okay. You might have it, but anyway, um, either okay. way, just just do just do what you got to do. And I'll just do my best, and I'll have fun doing, during yeah. it. That's all that matters. I'm all right. Try to make you good. Good. So yeah, just looking forward to the game tomorrow then. Okay. Yeah, well, thank you so much for the lesson. I appreciate it, and have a great, fantastic rest of your weekend and day. Thanks. You, well, it's not the weekend. It's Thursday, right? But anyway, who, who's yeah, counting? It's close. Yeah, close enough, yeah. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed it, and um, yeah, and good luck tomorrow, okay? All right, thank you. Have a okay. good one. Bye. Right, bye.